I went to college in Bronx, New York, um, not a hub of agriculture, but had kind of gardening in my periphery through my college experience back at my parents' house. I decided I wanted to go to the Peace Corps. Most, more specifically, I decided I wanted to go to Africa upon graduation, and um, the Peace Corps availed me a position in forestry in the country of Lesotho. And um, I went there in 1996, and uh, my first six months, um, very gung-ho about forestry, went and spoke to every villager I could. And um, in the course of our conversations, it became clear that um, more food was even more pertinent than more trees. So with my little bit of agriculture, uh, mostly on a garden scale, but my ability to, uh, to at least in my mind, access more resources, i.e. seeds, tools, what have you. Um, I said, well, let's, let's give that a go. We got some tools and we got some seeds and uh, we started planting. That was, a real, that was a real success. Well, I would say the, the Africa piece was, for all intents and purposes, the awakening of whatever kind of deep seed of agriculture was, was in my soul and psyche. My wife, Jill, and I, and our boy, Eli, and several interns run Gaining Ground Farm. I don't come from farming background. Jill doesn't come from farming background. My nearest connection to uh, anything agricultural was my, my dad's dad ran a fruit stand in Southern California for a number of years, but that's about as, as close as we get. Then maybe we'll, we'll lay some drip down on those. One of the major downsides of not coming from a farming background. It wasn't not what to look for in the land. It was like, how does one go about, you know, acquiring a piece of farm, farmland? A lot of farms, they're just, well, we've been on this land for 100 years, I don't know how you'd do it. Uh, agronomically, I knew what I was looking for. The purchasing of the land um, is where the you know, treachery reared its evil head. We went to a bank, brought our business plan, which we spent a long time developing. I brought my credentials, I sat down at the table with the banker, and I said, um, I think I've got a really solid idea here. And he said, this looks fantastic. I mean, you really have your, your, your stuff together here. Um, I agree, it looks great, but there's no way right. we're going to lend any money to an agricultural pursuit. A little dumbfounded, I walked out of there, and I came back and I told Jill, and um, we went and had a beer and kind of lamented. And then I started our periphery search. And as it turns out, we went back to that exact same bank I started at, and they said, we're going to take, uh, Mike, we're going to take you off the loan, except in name and your credit. We're going to take any, all your background of it so there's no piece of agriculture listed. We're going to base the loan on your wife and her off-farm income, and you're going to basically buy yourself a country estate. He told us with no apology that, you know, this is the only way it's going to work if agriculture is off the map. Definitely money for land is the greatest barrier to entry. No question about it. In the world of policy, that needs to be where a lot of energy is invested in, in creating opportunity or availing federal state monies at a guaranteed reasonable rate to small farmers to kind of get their, get their bearings. But right now it's just, it's usury and chaos are the two options for small farmers and, and neither of those seem particularly charming.